Hello everybody, it's that time again. It's time for post bag, even though this is clearly a box. So first up we have other electronic components with a value of $1. I forgot to write the date on a lot of these, but all of them have arrived in the month of June, so we have a general idea of when they came. Okay, so these are USB boost boards. So what they are is that you can plug in a lower voltage in here and it will boost it up to 5 volts out here. I actually seen it on Dave Darko's uh, no button video and I thought that that would be pretty useful so I got a few of them. Pretty cool. Next up is engineering ruler with a value of two cent. It doesn't feel like an engineering ruler. Ah, so pretty interesting. Let's zoom in on this. So this is as focused as I can get it. It's pretty zoomed in, so me moving around at all is bouncing it around the camera but it is an MCP23017 and if you've been following um, David Watts and Unexpected Makers videos on designing a seven segment display out of LED sticks, I'm not sure what they're actually called, um, this was a chip that Unexpected Maker was talking about in his last video on it. It's a I squared C chip to GPIO pin output. So I actually bought it before that video was released. Um, I bought it a few weeks ago. I'll pop it up on screen at some stage when I bought it. But it, I bought it for the purpose of using it as a GPIO pin extender for an ESP8266. So it's got 16 output pins on it, I believe, and you can control it with I squared C. So yeah, you can use it for that. Cool. Next up is integrated circuits with a value of 77 cent. Feels pretty big. I'm gonna guess it's a max 7219 just by feeling it. Yep, it's another max 7219 LED matrix display. I didn't have a lot to say about this in the last post bag and I've even less to say about it in this one. Next up, we've got the very descriptive name of module and it was $1.93, very specific. Okay, cool, so this is an STM32 board. I either ordered this a long time ago or I ordered it really recently. Um, yeah, so I, Judging by the envelope, and I'll pop it up on screen when I ordered it as I normally do, it was shipped out on the 5th, um, so it's, yeah, it was pretty quick to get here too, so it's pretty recent. Um, Great Scott did a pretty good video on this, so it's just another type of development board, it has a lot of cool features on it, it's pretty fast, it's really cheap, it's only about $2, and uh, it's got pretty good analog um analog resolution, I think. Um, yeah, he summarizes it pretty well. The only thing is that it needs to be programmed, even though it has a USB header on it, it needs to be programmed over um, over a s serial device or whatever, and you need to adjust the jumpers when you're programming it. Um, again, Great Scott goes through all of that, so I might have a play around with that at some stage. It looks pretty nice. Next up is expansion board module, value of two cent. Okay, cool. So this is another pin extender, I believe, for the ESP8266. I came across a sub or a Reddit post on the ESP8266 subreddit about options for getting more pins. I believe this was one of them. So let's take a closer look at the chip. It's pretty smudged out, but it says PCF85741. So this is another port expander. Um, I 
can't remember what the difference between these two are. Obviously it has this dip switches up here. That's for changing the I squared C address as well. But um yeah, I can't remember why I would have bought both of them. I guess they were just both recommended as an option and I said I'd give it a go. Yeah, so might take a look at them in a future video or whatever. But uh yeah, seems like it could be a bit of fun. It was about a dollar, if I remember correctly. So, cool. Next up, Electronic Development Board, a value of $9.50. Yeah, that was cut pretty weird. I cut across it relatively straight, actually, but uh, it sealed, like, completely at a weird angle. Weird. Uh, so this is a Lowland D32 board. Uh, I think it's the new kind of w official WeMOS boards. Um, I didn't ha actually have a lot of VSP32 boards, so if I wanted to use one in a project, I was going to uh, lose it, basically. So, um, yeah, I wanted to get a board, um, and one of my most important requirements is that it exposed the USB pin, because the... Lowland Minis doesn't, so none of the pins output 5 volts on the Lowland Mini or whatever it's called, the ESP32 Mini board. Um, yeah, which is kind of a problem if you want to use it with higher voltage devices or one that's not going through the voltage regulator, like some NeoPixels or whatever. So, um, yeah, it should be pretty good other than that. Um, yeah, looking forward to trying them out. This one is GoPro camera mount and had a value of a dollar. Okay, cool. So these are little mounts for a GoPro that attach to um, a normal tripod screw. So say for example, my webcams, such as the one here, uh, has a screw hole on the back of it that is the same as you'd have find on the bottom of a DSLR. So it's for attaching to tripods. So I have a couple of kind of custom mounts that I'd like to make, I think. And these are one of the cheaper ways of getting screws for them. Uh, also, if people are interested, I could show how I like assemble together the... Uh, webcam holder that I have. It's just an arm on an IKEA lamp, but uh, if people are interested I could go through it. Um, so yeah, it'd be pretty useful if I want to attach uh, my webcams to something else. I'm actually thinking about getting, a, getting another webcam for over in the area that has the 3D printer and the oven. And yeah, and yeah, one of my dogs was saying hi to you too. Next up is adapter with a value of 50 cent. So these are 10 SW18010P. And I think they are tilt sensors, if I remember right. Let me just get my multimeter and uh, check it out. So how they're meant to work is that there's kind of a spring in here attached to one of the legs and then the other leg is coming up through the center of it. So in normal use, the spring isn't touching off the center, but if you shake it, it should be. But uh, I, I know it fell off there, but I've been trying to get it to work and I have yeah, <laughs> I haven't gotten it to make my multimeter beep, so I might need to try that out with uh, with a microcontroller, which might be faster um, than my multimeter, which isn't on the right mode at the moment, but uh, it was on the right mode. <laughs> Let's try that again. How embarrassing. Um, but again, yeah, I haven't uh, haven't reproduced it yet, but 
like maybe my multimeter is just too slow to catch the spring touching off it. So it might be worth connecting that up to an Arduino to check it out. So here's just a really simple test that will turn on the built-in LED when the pin is low and it's been pulled up to 10k. So if I shake it, I got it to change there, but to be honest it was a lot of work and also I'm pretty sure if I just shake the breadboard that much it'll uh, turn low too. Yeah, so. I am not sure about these. Maybe it's just the fact with the extra wires as well. If you soldered them in, maybe it'd be better, but jury's out on them for sure. Actually, final update, I promise. Um, if you flick it, it tends to work pretty well. And I'm not moving the breadboard stuff nearly at all there. So maybe it needs to be a pretty sharp impact to make the two contacts touch. Who knows? Second last one is circuit board of quantity of three and it was 72 cent. Okay, so it's just a larger proto board. Um, I have some of the smaller stuff, I guess it would have been about that size, but um, there's some larger projects that I wanted to do and I've started to I like this a lot more than the brown stuff now it's a little bit more expensive but it gives you the option of being able to solder to both sides it's just better quality like uh, yeah it doesn't seem like the pads of it will fall off either it's just a bit more solid and straight as well so um, yeah, just useful to have a few of them around, like even if I need it for something smaller I can still cut it, but having the smaller ones didn't really give me the flexibility of building a more complex circuit on them, so yeah, cool. And finally, I don't think we've left a great one for last, components and parts, a value of one dollar, just doesn't feel like much, but we'll see. Okay, cool. So these are TP4054s and these have a very special use case. Let me grab them. So this is a Lowland 32 light board, but it's not an official one from Wemos. It's a clone and uh, there is a bit of a fault in it. It's not a part that I particularly use a lot, but um. I saw uh, one of the users of my channel who has a user, a viewer of my channel who has his own channel. I think it goes under DigiCool. Um, he fixed the issue, so I thought that looks interesting. I'll try fix it too. He explains what the issue is a lot better than I will, but basically this LED charge light is on even though I clearly have no battery in here, so it's not charging at all. Um, yeah, so, and it wasn't stopping charging for him either, I think as well. So like if he had a battery plugged in, I think it was charging it, but it wasn't doing the over voltage protection right either. So that's what this chip is, the TP4054. There is one on it, but it must be faulty. Um, or it's maybe a bad batch of them or something because he bought the same chip from the same seller or same board from the same seller and had the same issue with the micro or sorry the charge LED and on his video he successfully replaced it with one of these so I said I'd buy it and give it a go these are pretty small pins so that'll be fun I see some components around it that uh, are looking pretty liable that I'll knock them off, but sure. Uh, I have to learn how to deal with small components at some stage, so yeah, we'll give it a go with that and we'll see how we get on. Okay everybody, that's it for this post bag. It's a pretty random collection of things, but um, 
yeah, I'm sure we can build some cool things with it. If you have any questions or comments on any of them, I'd love to hear them. And uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks a lot.